I'm sure no one wants to see this happen in their dental practice. Just think that after an implant placement, the patient come back complaining there is no implant in my mouth. If you want to know what you should have to have in mind before sinus lift surgery and a dental implant placement, this video is for you. Hi there, I'm Farida. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here, welcome back to the Dental Radiology. So, two important subjects to keep in mind about the maxillary sinus before sinus lift and dental implant placement are sinus anatomy and pathologic conditions. Starting with anatomy, uh, we have the size of the maxillary sinus. Hypoplastic sinus is a small sinus, a sinus with a small volume. We can say smaller than the normal size. It's not pathologic. It is an anatomical variation. It can be two-sided or one-sided. Usually there is no problem for dental implant placement. But in these cases, if the sinus floor is too high, or I can say superiorly, the length for this implant is measured from the crest to the nasal floor. On the other hand, the size of the sinus can be bigger. This is called a hyperplastic sinus. It is because of the monetization of the sinus into the body of the maxillary bone. The total sinus can be extended laterally into the zygomatic process and inferiorly into the alveolar process. The pneumatization of the sinus into the alveolar process between the teeth, we say it has a dropping view, which you can see in the peripheral view, a thin, well-defined radiopac line, a greater pneumatization, you can see the sinus floor undulating around or dropping over the roots. If you see this radiograph in doubt whether it is a sinus or a lesion, you can see the pedial space and lamina dura around the teeth, suggesting a normal condition. If we take a panoramic, you can see the whole sinus. In this case, there was a severinomatization of the maxillary sinus that the dentist did not pay attention before the dental implant placement. The pneumatization of the maxillary sinus may limit the bone support for dental implants. The loss of the alveolar process and increased sinus pneumatization are seen as a consequence of tooth loss and posterior maxilla. The percents of sinus septa. Sinus septa vary in shape, size, position, and development, and are known to be present in the maxillary sinus floor around 40% of the population. The absence of the sinus septa is a favorable situation because the presence of the septa increases the chance of sinus membrane perforation during the sinus lift procedure. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want anything inside the sinus causing infection. So we should have that in mind. Sinus floor elevation becomes complicated if sinus septa are incomplete or run longitudinally compared to the transverse orientation. Various modifications in surgical approaches have been suggested to reduce the rate of perforation in the presence of sinus septa. Various modifications in surgical approaches have been suggested to reduce the rate of perforation in the presence of sinus septa, including preparation of a wider window during lateral window approach or preparation of two separate windows on each side of a septum. So the key to a successful sinus floor elevation procedure would fly on proper pre-operative assessment localization of the septa to minimize the possible complications. So the CVCT view can be very helpful for seeing the sinus and the septa. The angle of the buccal lingual maxillary sinus wall, the buccal lingual angle of the maxillary sinus walls or we can say the angle formed between the palatal and buccal walls of the sinus is important. According to a study in 2001, the chance of membrane perforation are highest when this angle is less than 30 degrees. The chance of perforation reduces when the angle is between 30 to 60 degrees 
and the chance of sinus membrane perforation almost is zero if the angle is larger than 60 degrees. The presence of posterior superior alveolar artery, or we can see the PSA, that arises from the muxillary artery. The anastomosis between the posterior superior alveolar artery and the infraorbital artery provides the blood supply to the muxillary sinus membrane, peristal tissues, and anterior lateral wall of the sinus. Since we can have bleeding as a frequent complication during the sinus lift procedure, it is important to check the presence of the PSA at the site of the sinus lift surgery. In 2006, a study showed that the existing of the alveolar artery and mostly would be inside the bone with a diameter less than one millimeter. To avoid the bleeding during the surgery, we should visualize the artery using the CVCT before the surgery, searching in the cross-sectional views. If the alveolar antral artery, or I can say the PSA, is not detected in the CBCD or its diameter is one millimeter or less, it is considered a favorable situation. If the diameter is greater than two millimeters, it is an unfavorable since the chance of bleeding is higher during the procedure. Maybe modifying the lateral window technique or the approach of the window can be in the superiorly or I can say a higher position, but the thickness of the lateral wall can limit this action. The thickness of the bone on the buccal side, or I can say the lateral wall, is an important situation during the lateral wall approach for the sinus lift surgery. The wall thickness seen to increase from the crystal to the apical. A thin buccal bone of less than one millimeter thickness is considered favorable. A thickness greater than 2.5 millimeter is considered unfavorable with increased chances of perforation of the stenidian membrane. One of the important anatomy structure is the ostelmiata complex, is the path that the muxillary sinus is drained inside the middle meatus of the nasal cavity. It is formed by the etmoid infundibulum, the middle meatus, the hotus simionaris, Maxeriostome, itmoid bulla, frontal recess, and the unsnate process. You can see the whole path right here. The whole path must be clear. The ostome is exclusive pathway for the maxillary secretions to escape into the middle meatus. Ostome patency can be related to maxillary sinus disease. Remember, if you want to see the ostome, you must order the patency of the ostome to the radiologist as we need a wider field of view. Okay, that is all for today. Don't forget to subscribe, press that bell button for getting notifications for my next videos. If you have any questions or you experience on dental implant and sinus lift surgery, please comment down below. I will be delighted to answer your questions.